What's going on everybody? My name is Amal and today's lesson is about trading for a living and my 10 rules, my commandments of how I discipline myself in the trading world. Okay, so let's get started first with the background. All right. Uh, again, if you are not familiar with me, I am the head analyst of the Cryptosomnia community. I have been trading for about 11 years. I graduated from Purdue University with a computer information technology degree, and I minored in finance and economics. Okay, so I first learned how to trade stocks around 17 or 18, and this was right before the financial crisis happened in the US. So right around 2007, 2008, I saw my dad's stock account basically one day and I decided to start trading it behind his back. I was really just fascinated by the fact that you can make money by just buying and selling companies, right? Because that's really what you do when you're trading in the stock market. So long story short, when I started trading my dad's account, I was making some money here and there, but then I lost some and then I lost more. And it was really just a painful and costly lesson. And really with a heavy heart, I decided to essentially be able to fix my mistakes or try to make back the money that I lost from my dad, right? And so a few months later, after I turned 18 in the US, you have to be 18 to open an equities account. Um, I decided to open up my own uh, brokerage account. Right. And so sometimes I got lucky when I was trading and sometimes I didn't, um, you know, more often than not in any given month, I was kind of just losing money and I didn't really know what I was doing. But as time went on, I decided to pick up, you know, more on the books that were around. I would go to the libraries. I would really just scour the web for articles and videos and whatever else that was available that would teach me how to trade okay one thing i understood about trading was first know your market okay know exactly what sector you're in or what sector you understand and then trade that one well and so for me back then i understood technology well and i i traded the tech sector really well i did not understand healthcare so that was my weakest sector and i would always lose money okay so that's one of the lessons i learned about trading equities all right but over the last almost 12 to 13 years of trading. And again, I've traded the equities markets. I traded commodities. I was specifically trading gold and oil. I started trading Forex in 2014. Dollar yen, dollar pound uh, were my favorite two pairs. And then I started trading crypto starting in 2016. And back then we didn't really have that many exchanges with derivative platforms. Uh, so it was mostly for me, uh, more so things like um, Bitstamp or uh, I think Coinbase was just coming on the scene, right? So things like Bitcoin and Ethereum were really just my go-to products that I would, you know, trade back and forth, okay? So I've basically had all the ups and downs that most traders um, like you will have or are having. And I wanted to share my lessons with you so you don't make the same mistakes I did and you can actually learn from some of the things that I'm about to teach you. Okay, so let's get started. All right, rule number one, risk management and position sizing. Okay, I'm sure you guys have heard this all too many times, right? Basically what it comes down to folks is you need to understand how much capital you have in your account and what you're willing to risk uh, per trade. Okay, now typically there's a rule of thumb whether it's in equities or Forex, that you don't want to risk more than say, maybe two or 3% on any given trade, okay? So if you start sizing heavy, so say for example, you have a $100,000 account, right? You should not be trading with more than $2,000 per trade. Or rather, if you get stocked out, you should not be losing more than $2,000. Think of it that way, okay? Now, most people, as soon as they enter the trading world, they might get the taste of a couple of winners here and there, or unfortunately, they might get the taste of a couple of losers right off the get-go. Now, what most people will do is they will not understand how to size properly, meaning the two to 3% rule that I told you about. And so when they win, right, they will probably size up. 
And even when they lose, they'll probably size up even more because most people's psychology is that when you start losing a couple of trades, you need to make back the money that you lost, meaning you have to size up heavier. That's actually the number one rule to actually losing more money. And same thing with when you start winning trades is when you start to become a little bit more confident and cocky, the market will start turning on you. Okay. And the big trades that you're in will start eating into your profit margins and ultimately your initial capital. Okay. So sizing is very important. Understanding how to position size and manage your risk properly by setting your proper stops and understanding how much risk to take is probably the first and foremost thing you need to do before trade. Okay. So use a two to 3% rule. Okay. And that will definitely help you going forward. Now, another thing that most people try to do is because they're sizing too heavy, they have to have tight stops, right? And so because they have tight stops, you're not able to capitalize on the breadth of the movement uh, and the asset. So because you have tight stops and your position is too heavy, you'll probably get wicked out of the position just due to the random noise that's happening in the market, right? And that's simply because you got greedy in taking heavy positions and you had to set stops too tight. So size down, keep a wider stop, and then you won't be as panicky or fidgety once the market starts moving, okay? Number three, not having stops, massive mistake. A majority of people come into the market thinking that once they enter a trade, you know, it'll have to go in the direction whether they're short or long, right? Uh, no matter how much confidence, um, technicals, whatever you have, you will never know what the market is going to do, okay? So always have a stop ready, all right? And know exactly once your stop gets hit, what kind of risk that is for your account and capital. Uh, number four, um, same thing with not taking profit at levels that were predetermined before entering a trade. Most new traders will typically get into a trade, they'll set their stops properly, but they won't take profit on their first target that they set out. They'll think that, okay, well, you know, it has to go up. I mean, it's doing really well. They see good volume, good uh, price action and candle spread. Um, and then the market starts to shift and it starts to go down. And then they've basically lost their position, right? Um, they lost their target markers. And then once the market starts coming down, they'll sell at a slightly lower profit, profit or maybe even a break-even position. And then the market will again go back up. This is really one of the, the big things of most traders is they don't have game plans before they enter trades, okay? So again, risk management and position sizing, very important, okay? Number two, identifying a trend, okay? Typically, you want to be a buyer on uptrending markets and you want to be a seller on downtrending markets, okay? Do not try to be a counter trend trader, all right? So let's look at an example, U.S. oil, all right? So we're looking at oil right now and we see for the most part for the last couple of months, it was just chop, 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 up and down, but it was also trading in a pretty wide range, right? It was trading in this high right here and pretty much this low right here. So that's a nice, you know, about uh, $15 range, okay? Now, ranging markets are a little bit more tricky, all right? Um, but we can say for the last, say, month and a half, the market has been going down, right? So if you're looking for any position to get into, you should not be looking to catch the bottom. You should not be looking to just go long just because you think it has bottomed. Okay, you can think about that if it's met critical support, like it has, you know, around here, 5119, which is this marker, right? You could say, okay, I'm gonna go along based on these technicals right here. But your stop should also be a little bit deeper, right? It should be maybe, um, I don't know, a couple dollars away. But the easiest trade to take in this kind of movement, right, in this market that's just been selling off consistently is a short. So once the market bounces back up, you may take a short right there and aim for either the previous low or even lower lows, okay? So again, identifying a trend is by far one of the most important things when you start looking at the technicals and the asset itself, all right? Let's get to the next one. All right, 
So this is uh, the, the game of patience versus impatience. And this really comes down to uh, those traders that are um, pretty much new in the market and they really want to sort of get rich quick, right? Um, and typically what happens is most traders will be afraid to cut their losers because they think, right? And this is where things get tricky. They start thinking too much. They start doing the thinking for the market, thinking for the asset. And they think that, uh, well, no, this you know thing cannot go, do go down any lower. It has to pick back up, right? The market doesn't really have to do anything the way you think it has to do. Okay, just because you are in a position, you think that, you know, X, Y, Z uh, support area or resistance level or whatever has to hold, doesn't mean it has to. What you should do is try to mitigate your risk by placing your stops. And if you think that the position is not going your way, just cut it, walk away. All right. The most successful traders I know are the ones who look at a market and when they start seeing their positions start going in the opposite direction, they just cut their losers. Okay. Because the point is that when you start getting into a trade, you should have enough conviction with the technicals that you've laid out and maybe even the fundamental analysis that you've done is that you think that the market from here should just start ticking up or down, whichever position that you're in. And if it starts dilly-dallying around price, that means something is wrong, okay? If the market starts getting shaky, it's best to just start cutting your losers, okay? So always be able to keep your losers small. And this is number three, the most important rule when it comes to the game of patience versus impatience. Do not ever, ever, ever add to a losing position. So for example, if we gave the example of oil right there. So if you are um, buying along right here, right? And you think that, all right, well, I think this thing is bottom right here. And it goes up a little bit, but then it again comes back around and it starts going lower and lower. And then it just kind of comes back up again, starts going a little bit lower. And you think that, okay, well, it looks like it's kind of just moving sideways. You know, it's not really creating big lower lows. So let me just buy some more here and here and here. You have basically just averaged down into a losing position because now instead of cutting your loser from your first buy in right here, right, with a stop right under, what you've really done is you've basically tripled your position by having multiple buys on your losing position. So once this thing starts breaking down, you're kind of screwed, right? Because from your original position size, you sized up, you added into a losing position, so you're probably now gonna lose even more capital. So again, big rule to remember, never ever add to a losing position. Okay. All right. Now rule number four right here is don't be impatient if the market is showing you strength, but it's not going to your targets according to your speed. Right? So for example, if we're looking at BTC USD, uh, some of the targets that we've laid out, you know, 10,500 about, uh, 11, 7, 11, 8. Now people think that, okay, well, it looks like it's going up. Well, why is it not going just straight up? Why can't it just hit 11,000 or 12,000 tomorrow or the day after or whatever? And this is where the, the market will sort of weed out the, the impatient, okay? Because the professionals and the bots and the algos really have ample time and money in the world to drive up the market or drive the market down, um, however they see fit. So it really just comes down to you being the impatient person where you cannot handle the fact that the market is moving slow in terms of getting to its target, right? So understanding how to be patient when the market is moving your way and giving it time to hit your targets that you laid out um, is crucial, okay? And it's crucial in maximizing your gains, okay? And with that being said, you need to be able to let your winners run, right? So while you do keep your losers small, right? One thing that I do preach in the Cryptosomnia community is that when you start hitting the, the target profits level by level, you can leave a little um, small bag for just in case price just starts going parabolic and ripping through all technicals. And this way you are happy that you took the targets um, and the profits where you did, but you also have a little bit to let the market just do its thing and just blast off, okay?
All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so where are we? Okay, trade your game plan, right? So the game plan from the get-go should always be this. As soon as you get in front of the market, you need to be able to identify a trend on a higher time frame, whether it's a four hour daily, weekly, monthly, et cetera, right? You need to figure out what kind of um, optimal entry you're looking for if you're going long or short, okay? Where are the key resistance or support levels? Where do you have high volume nodes? Um, you also need to be able to assess the risk for your trade, right? So where exactly are you going to be able to place your stop? You know, being able to find your stop, uh, that's manageable. Um, being able to put in whatever capital that's necessary that makes your stop worthwhile or your targets worthwhile. All this stuff is important to do before you enter a trade. Most traders I know who are amateurs will do this way after they've already entered a trade or just not do this at all, okay? And then they're, really just gambling. I mean, that's all you're really doing is if you don't have a game plan, I mean, you're kind of just entering the market in hopes of it doing something, right? So don't be someone who's just having hopes for the market to do one thing or another. Have a game plan set out, map out your entries, stops, targets, and let the market do its thing. Internal psychology, one of the biggest things as well manage your emotions whether you're winning trades you're losing trades whether you have a bad day uh, yesterday or a good day today be able to manage your emotions before you enter trades okay or even when you exit trades okay now we've all been in the position where we've lost you know a handful of trades in a row right and that really just starts weighing on your psyche right? and i get that okay you you start wondering that are you meant for this uh, should I just quit? Uh, will you ever win a trade? But just remember that in those pivotal moments when the market is about to break you, okay, um, you should have something for yourself to do where you realign your mindset. For me, what I like to do is I like to take a break away from the market, whether I go work out, do some yoga, meditate, do some positive affirmations, uh, whatever you need to do, get your mind right. Okay, and set yourself up uh, in terms of your mindset for a next winning trade. Okay, because at the end of the day, folks, trading is nothing but a numbers game. Okay, now we're going to start breaking down exactly what it means to be able to manage your risk, have multiple losing trades in a row if you just manage your risk, and then still come out on top as a winner at the end of the day. So, for example, Let's just say you started out with $20,000, okay? Um, when you start out with $20,000 and you risk 2% on each trade, so say for example, you get stopped out, you lose 400 bucks on the first trade, then you end up with 19,600, and then say you lose you know, one, two, three more trades after that. Then you end up with $18,447 uh, after five losing trades, or rather four losing trades. Okay. Now versus if you risk 10% on each trade after four losing trades, you're down almost, um, 40%, right? I mean, 40 to 45% because from 20,000 after four losing trades with 10% risk, you're down to 13,000. Okay. Versus the 18,447. If you risk 2%. Now let's just say we're starting off here, right? So you've lost four trades in a row and your next trade is about to be a winner, okay? And your next trade, instead of losing 2%, you gain 5%. So once you gain 5% on the next trade, well, look at that, right? You are now back at 19,600, or I'm sorry, $19,369. And say you win another trade on that and you compound that. Well, now you're back above even, right? And with a slight profit at $20,337. And so if you're aiming for 5% on each trade compounding, right, after say 20 trades, you've basically more than uh, doubled your account. You're ending with almost $40,945. Again, this is just 5% on each trade, right? So you can see the magic of compounding, but also the magic of minimizing your risk per trade, 
okay? So remember this lesson going forward, whichever your, um, market you're trading, okay? You can lose five trades in a row and you could still come out on top on the sixth or seventh trade, okay? All right, let's move on to the next one. Find out what works for you. Okay, this is definitely important for those of you who are creative, who like to utilize different um, technicals or indicators, etc. And what works for me may not work for you, and what works for you may not work for me. So I typically trade off raw price action, basic technicals like the SR levels, volume analysis, and some L3 level data, such as uh, footprint uh, bar statistics, maybe some open interest, uh, maybe some internal delta calculations. If that doesn't work for you, you could be maybe, you know, just a basic price action trader, just drawing horizontal lines, trend lines, fibs, etc. right? Or you could be a moving average trader, or you could use the RSI or MACD. And aside from indicators, who knows? You may not be meant for trading um, an hour to hour basis, right? You may be a good swing trader or you may be a uh, small scalp trader, like the five minute chart or the 15 minute chart. Although I kind of highly doubt it because um, the people who are successful most on that are typically just bots and algorithms because you cannot move faster than a bot or an algo on such small timeframes, okay? So it's best you zoom out on say the one hour or four hour and you will probably do a lot better, okay? All right. Managing your bias and ego. First things first, never, ever, ever have a bias when entering a market. Don't just think that, well, you know, the market can't just go down today because we're having such a great day since yesterday, or, you know, it can't just keep going up, etc. Okay. Just look at the technicals, see what the trend is and trade off that. Okay. The last thing I wanted to mention in this particular area is this is a quote that you really need to imprint in your mind, which is that Keynes once said, right? The market will stay irrational longer than you can remain solvent. And it's very true because the market will continue to do whatever the hell it wants to do. And you will continue to think you thinking that you know exactly what the market is going to do in its next step and you will be proven wrong many times. So trade off the technicals, trade off confirmation, uh, manage your risk properly, and I promise you at the end of the day, you will come out on top, okay? And there's always tomorrow, right? If you've drained your capital, uh, rather if you have not drained your capital completely and you've used proper stops, okay? There's always a tomorrow to trade, okay? Whether it's in this market, crypto, Forex, equities, commodities, as long as you have capital, you're you know, positive and you know how to trade technicals, you will ultimately win in the market if you just manage these rules and you follow them, okay? And if you missed a good trade, so what? That's fine. You know, wait for a pullback, wait for the next setup, but do not FOMO, okay? FOMOing is by far one of the easiest ways to lose money, okay? Always take profit to enhance your life. This is by far one of the most overlooked rules by many traders, even some of the traders that I think are smart, okay? And I'll tell you why, all right? When people start having good days or good weeks, right? They have these nice portfolios adding up, good amount of money, yet they still keep it in the market, right? They're still in their positions or they've walked it back, you know, say, uh, into profit into US dollar. However, they're not actually moving that money to use it in their lives. So what they're really thinking is, well, you know, I have this money, I made a lot of profit. Maybe I can make more profit on my profit, right? I can make more money on my money. And so because um, this money has not really changed your life, it's pretty much just numbers on a screen right? It's not real until the money does some tangible positive changes in your life. And so when I mean I take profit on, say, a weekly basis, I literally mean that I'm moving that money into my bank account. I don't care if I can make money 
tomorrow on the profits of today. Okay, that kind of forecasting doesn't really mean anything to me because I cannot feed myself tomorrow based on me thinking ahead into the future how much more money I can make, right? When you gotta eat, you gotta eat. So you better have money in your bank account. This is a rule that I personally think is one of the most important ones, okay? And last but not least, balance your life versus trading, all right? And I can't stress this enough, you need to understand how to not spend hours just staring at the charts. What I typically do is I will set alerts on different assets, on different time frames, and I'm just going to wait for one or any of them to trigger. And that will either give me an entry or an exit for my position. Okay. And trust me when I say this, no trader has become a millionaire by just watching the five minute charts and just staring at their screens for 14 hours a day. Most successful traders do not do that. They will number one, trade off higher time frames. All right. And number two, they just don't spend ungodly hours like that, just sitting in front of a screen. It's just going to drive them crazy or they'll burn out. Understand that you need to take a break. You need to breathe. You need to spend time with your friends, your family, uh, maybe even spend some time just alone, getting your head straight and get your mind right for the next trade. Okay. Mindset is everything even before you approach the market. Remember that. Okay. Because before you pull the trigger on a trade, your mindset, your emotions, your mentality matters. Okay. So if you're coming in with the losing mentality of a loser, you will almost always be a loser. Okay. So make sure you approach the market with positivity, forget the losers of yesterday and train your mind for the winner of today. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. Please do give me a thumbs up if you did comment or share and let me know your thoughts. And again, if you're thinking about joining our community, the Discord link is below in the YouTube description. So click on that, come join us, and I hope to see you all soon. All right, take care.